just when you thought hackers couldn't get any more evil, hackers are attacking WinRAR. Yes, that WinRAR. WinRAR, the file compression software that had a 40-day last forever free trial. WinRAR has had several CVEs that have been caught being exploited in the wild by a Russia-aligned group called RomCom to hack into businesses and try to steal money from them using these three vulnerabilities and one new one in the WinRAR software. If you're not familiar with kind of how WinRAR works, WinRAR is a tool that is used to compress and decompress files, right? So you have a bunch of files you want to send to somebody, you want to email them to that person, but you know, maybe they're big files, right? A compression file is a way of making those files temporarily smaller, and then you send them and they decompress them. Now, WinRAR has its own file format called the RAR format, RAR XD, and like any file format, right, it has a variety of flags and headers and information about the files inside of them that at the end of the day are just binary fields, right? This is a header value structure that exists inside of the RAR file that, you know, eventually has to be processed by code. And if there is any code anywhere in computers, as we all know, that can be a vulnerability and there are vulnerabilities in WinRAR being exploited. Now let's be real, you can't stop zero days from happening, but one thing you can do is defend against them with today's video sponsor, ThreatLocker. ThreatLocker is a zero trust endpoint protection platform designed around stopping hackers from getting a foothold in your network. Here we're on a workstation at Big Corp Incorporated LLC where a user has downloaded a suspicious PowerShell script and they're about to run it. Not great. Because ThreatLocker knows the baseline of this computer using its learning mode, where it learned what is allowed during a good baseline, ThreatLocker will detect this and block the execution of the script. Someone in the sock for this network will get an alert and can either deny it or, my favorite feature, allow it with ThreatLocker's ring fencing technology. They can run the script but deny access to other parts of the computer, like the user's files, or even deny internet access to the script. And the sock even gets the ability to run the script in a sandbox environment to see what it does before they either approve or deny the access. Using my link right here, go check out ThreatLocker, and next time that Zero Trust comes up at your company, give ThreatLocker a shot. Thanks again, ThreatLocker, for sponsoring this video. Back to the video. The way that this particular bug actually works is really, really interesting. So the bug being tracked today is a CVE 2025-8088. So this bug is in the way that WinRAR handles these things called ADSs. And no, this is Windows, but it's not ads. It's actually alternative data streams. So alternative data streams are like this really weird kind of like old school function of the NTFS file system, which is a file system that Windows uses. And it's basically a way for you within the file system to store additional metadata about files, right? So here, you know, we have this one file that's called zap.sh. And like you have this data, additional data stream. And then you have this other one called zone identifier. I'm describing them as is described here in this kind of tutorial. The reason I'm speaking very lightly about ADSs is because I've actually never seen a legitimate use of an ADS in the wild. I've only seen it in like hacking tutorials and like intrusion response. I think I've read somewhere that like SQL Lite maybe, or maybe it's SQL database on Windows like uses ADS. But basically this is a place where hackers can hide data, but also because of the nature of the RAR format, it is a feature that WinRAR must maintain backwards compatibility with, right? WinRAR, one of their biggest claim to fame is their ability to comply with the NTFS file system, which is a file system that Windows uses under the hood, right? And so the vulnerability here is actually directly in this. So this is the example of one of the uh, RAR folders that got caught by the Russian hackers, right? All we see here is a RAR file, and inside the RAR file is somebody's CV, Eli Rosenfeld, right? And it looks like there's only one file in this project or in this folder. But what actually happens is when you go to decompress this PDF, there are a variety of alternative data streams that are attached to that file, right? And so some of these are actually like intentionally obfuscated. So they're saying like, oh, we're just extracting to the WinRAR temp directory, right? Winder temp, Winder temp one, temp two, et cetera. And what's happening here is the actor is trying to basically put chaff in the air, right? Like spray a, a bunch of nonsense that the user doesn't really care about this because it looks like it's just making a temporary file in the process of decompression. But what's actually happening under the hood is the attacker is exploiting a vulnerability in WinRAR's handling of the alternative data streams. These little dot dot slashes here 
are what is known as a di directory traversal. Anytime you're writing software that deals with file paths, right, which is just the location of a file, it's very important to be able to account for and sanitize the directory traversal case, right? Because what could happen is what's happening here, where a user is saying, oh, you wanna put a file here? No, what we're actually gonna do is put it one level up into app data local temp and then put this evil DLL file. And these paths here are basically guessing at what level the RAR file is being extracted at. And it's using that to try to put this msedge.dll file inside app data local temp, which is where the loader will look first before loading edge in the future, right? So what's gonna happen is after this file is put down, this msedge.dll is gonna be loaded by the computer, which is gonna obviously contain malicious content. The directory traversal case, this use of the dot dot slash, meaning they're walking back up to the top of the computer, is a very uh, common vulnerability pattern in basically any kind of file compression or decompression scheme because there are tons of edge cases in the types of files and the types of file systems that the compression format needs to handle. And so if you forget to sanitize for this string pattern in the ADS, the alternative data streams like they have here, you're gonna allow for the ability for somebody to insert data at a location that is higher up than their RAR file. It would be okay if this file app data local temp and then msedge.dll got made locally, but the fact that it's able to be made higher up than the RAR file is where it gets really dangerous. And this isn't the first time we've seen CVEs like this, right? Another CVE 2023-38831, basically a similar vulnerability in not necessarily directory traversal in, uh, in WinRAR, but the way that they handle two files that have the same name, right? By trying to open document.pdf, a bug in WinRAR actually allows it to go into the document.pdf folder and run the first script that is found there. So again, I'm not using this video to kind of dunk on WinRAR. There are plenty of bugs like this in 7-Zip. I actually made a video about 7-Zip that I'll link in the uh, description below and I'll put at the end of the, this video. Uh, but like when you're dealing with these binary data formats and they're having to deal with files that have a bunch of edge cases and a bunch of different file systems, you are going to have errors that are just naturally going to happen. The reason why these CVEs are particularly dangerous is because none of these are actually memory corruption, right? If these were memory corruption bugs, there would be some kind of pattern required for the attacker to leak information about the running state of the WinRAR process and then use that to exploit the process. But because this is a logic issue or a sanitization issue in WinRAR, it's significantly easier for the attacker to run it. They don't have to do any memory corruption. They just say, oh, if I make these two files in the right way with the right properties, I can pop calc on this computer. And the same thing goes for the WinRAR stuff that we're talking about for this bug, the 2025 CVE. Uh, you know, instead of having to corrupt the memory of the process, all I have to do is like, oh, if I put directory traversal patterns in the alternative data stream of the PDF file, I get to write files wherever I want and they can put their malicious uh, MS Edge file. And then ultimately this uh, RAR file delivers a bunch of malicious content, one of them being obviously the MS Edge.dll. When MS Edge.exe, the actual Edge browser runs, it's going to load that DLL, which has malicious code in it, that will call out to apparently a senior laptop or srlaptop.com, where it will do whatever kind of nasty malicious C2 it needs to do. And then the question for the class, obviously, would Rust have fixed this? No, not at all. Rust, and again, people like get mad when I make this content. I think sometimes like Rust, I acknowledge is not a perfect language. Rust can have memory corruption vulnerabilities. We always go to this as the example, right? I'm not an idiot. I know this, this thing exists. This is literally just take Rust code with no unsafe in it. And if you run this code, it will execute a buffer overflow. Now, the way that it does this is using this really nasty thing called construct fake string, which under the hood uses this lifetime translator. Now, as somebody who programs Rust literally at my job, I don't understand what is happening here. I'm pretty sure what it does is it takes a variable with a certain lifetime and converts it to a new variable with a different lifetime, allowing for it to not be dropped by it. Basically, this kind of code should never pass a code review. So Rust is not perfect. And again, a bug like this, it is more of a logic issue or a sanitization issue would not have been caught by Rust. But I do have to make sure I clarify here, a majority of bugs that come out, 70% according to Microsoft and Google are memory corruption vulnerabilities. Those would most of the time have been caught by Rust. The problem being obviously that the majority of the OS ecosystem is not in Rust and making those two interplay together is harder than it sounds. Um, but that's a different video for a different day. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and then go check out the video on 7-Zip, which is very close to this different bug, but more of a binary exploitation flavor. We'll see you over there. 
You clicked. Okay, see you there. Bye.